thank you for coming to the last session of the last DrupalCon Europe ever. <laughs> uh, uh, and we're going to talk about offline, like uh, DrupalCon next year. It's going to be offline as well. Um, and it's about uh, continuing the work we did uh, with the mobile initiative that John uh, lead, led yeah, a while back. So why are we talking about offline uh, right now? So you see on the graph that the number of devices, mobile devices that are in use uh, today and until 2019. There's going to be six billion uh, mobile devices in the world in use uh, in two years. So mobile is very important. And for, for a lot of people, mobile is the only thing they have. They don't have a desktop, so, you know, it's important. Uh, at the same time, mobile users uh, don't really install apps anymore. They, they use five apps and that's it. Uh, they don't, you know, if they install something, they just leave it on and don't delete them. So, on the website side of things, uh, we figured out a way to display websites properly in any kind of uh, form factor for devices uh, because of the responsive uh, tools that we have, APIs, JavaScript, uh, the picture tag, that kind of things. So it works well. But offline, uh, offline capabilities that apps have, we don't have that yet in the web, or we didn't have that uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, but now we have tools that are good enough that we can use to make that happen for website as well. So the network, it's the next step of the mobile initiative and the responsive web, basically. Because we solved the form factor, but we didn't solve the connection issues that we have with mobile devices. Drupal already has everything you need to make a proper responsive website with uh, breakpoints, picture, some JavaScript APIs, polyfills, that kind of things. So it's ready for responsive. And I'm arguing that we should have the same thing for offline since it's in the continuation of the mobile initiatives. Uh, we had a mobile initiative, which should have been called device initiative, maybe, <laughs> because it's just about the form factor. And we should have a mobility initiative. It's like if you're on your smartphone in a train, well, sometimes you don't have any connection. So we should plan for that with Drupal Core. Well, if you don't agree, uh, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so how do we make that happen? Uh, the Google team has led the way uh, in this space, basically, with what they call progressive web app. It's a set of different technologies grouped together for marketing purpose, basically. And uh, there are three components to a progressive web app. The first one is HTTPS. So security is very important. Uh, because you'll see later, we can do a lot of things, and if you can't control what it's doing, it can get really you know, dangerous and invasive. Uh, so HTTPS, then the manifest.json file, to, it's, it's something that already exists, but it's uh, made better with this uh, manifest file. And finally, Service Worker, which is a new technology that allows websites to be available offline. <coughs> so the manifest file, uh, it holds uh, website metadata, like title, uh, you know, the icon, the few, a few things like that. And it also enables uh, operating system integration. So if you're on Android, for, exa for example, and use Chrome, uh, you go to a website and you click the add to home screen uh, button in the browser and you get uh, you know this pop-up so you want to add a bookmark to your home page and with the manifest.json file you can decide which icon is going to show up as the bookmark 
and what is the default name of the shortcut as well. And once it's added to your home screen, uh, when you click on it, the way it's launched, you can control that as well. So you have a sort of very small splash screen that is displayed and you can control the background, the icon and the text that is displayed on this uh, splash screen. <coughs> to use it, it's uh, really easy. You add uh, a link tag in the head of your document. Uh, you reference the manifest file and this file contains all of those properties and that's basically everything that, it need, that, that needs to be in that, in that file. Sorry. <clears throat> All right. I mean, I'm going quickly because we have a discussion afterwards. So. Uh, service worker. No, that's the real interesting part of, uh, of those new tools that we have. Uh, so basically, when you're on a web page and you click on a link to change the page, uh, the request is going to be handled by this service worker if you enable it and install it on your website. And this service worker, worker can do a lot of things with that request uh, to make sure that uh, you, know, you, f uh, you follow up uh, normally or you change the request or you change a few things. Uh, to make it work better for you. Uh, conceptually, it's like a proxy in your browser. So you're writing a proxy for all the requests on the client browser, and which is why you need some security around that. Uh, it's a separate JavaScript file, so it's a simple JavaScript file that you tell the browser to use as the service worker. So it's JavaScript, nothing new uh, around that. There's events and the thing you use to with the DOM. Uh, we have a full service worker cache that you can manage uh, however you want, and it's separate from the browser cache. So if you clear your browser cache, it doesn't delete what's in the service worker cache. That way, if you want to keep something, uh, you know, uh, until you know for years, you can. And then you have uh, some more advanced uh, features that are not really implemented outside of Chrome. Uh, so background synchronization. So if you're on the DrupalCon Vienna website, for example, uh, you visit the schedule page, you go to lunch, you don't have an internet connection, uh, you can still view the page because it's in the cache in the service worker. And let's say you add one to your schedule while you're offline. So with Service Worker, you can save this uh, kind of interaction. And when the user gets back online, send it to the, bro to the, to the server to actually you know, uh, save it in a database and a user profile and that kind of things. And you also have a push notification. So if your save station is going to start soon, you can uh, send the notification to the phone to say, go to this room to attend the session you booked, basically. It works for like institutional websites, single page app, it doesn't really matter. Um, so any kind of website you have, you can use it uh, on that. And because of background synchronization and the push notification, once the service, service worker is installed, uh, you can interact with it even when the browser is closed. Which, you know, it's like any other app that you install on your phone. So it's a bit scary, but you already do that with other apps, so. <coughs> so quickly, a few use cases. The first one is you can make a website that is available offline. Uh, you can improve performance by always serving JavaScript or CSS from the service worker cache. So you never talk to the network to send those files, for example. You send push notification, synchronized data like the event uh, 
schedule thing. And uh, you can do weird things as well. Uh, because you control the request, if a request is too long, you can just kill it and return an error to the browser. So if Twitter is down, you can say after one second, I just give up on this uh, Twitter resource and load the page. So that way we can avoid some uh, <laughs> problem that happened a few years ago when Twitter was done usually, well, regularly. Uh, now about the support of this new technology. Uh, in Chrome, Firefox, Opera, uh, Samsung Internet, it's available. It's enabled by default. Uh, so you can use it on those browsers. And since it's, it's progressive web app, so if the browser doesn't support it, there's no error. It just, you know, you just don't use it. It's a, a usual website, basically. But Safari and Edge are currently implementing this technology. So, you know, soon on iPhone, that will work, hopefully. We don't know when, but uh, yeah. Uh, so I'll just go over quickly what type of uh, asset management you can do with Service Worker and Cache. So this is like the normal request. Uh, service Worker doesn't do anything. You just uh, pass the request and send the response. Uh, if you want to add everything that the user visits in the cache, so you tell the service worker to fetch the data from the network, and the response is saved in the service worker cache and, and sent to the browser. So you always have a duplicate of whatever the user is seeing. And that way, when you have something in cache, but the network is down, so you're at lunch and <coughs> you don't have network, the service worker can see that the network request fails, look into the cache, and send the cached version to the browser. And you know, the browser thinks that you know, there's data and it displays the website. So you won't see the um, you know, connection unavailable or something. Uh, error from Chrome. And now, if you visit something but you don't have it in a cache, you can also send uh, like default data. For example, a sample page that says that say you are offline for anything that you don't have in a cache. So that's possible as well. Is it clear for everyone? Yeah. So who knew about Service Worker uh, beforehand? Yeah, so most of you. Uh, who used it in a project? Oh, yes. Four, five. Not bad. Uh, works well? Yeah? OK. <laughs> uh, so the topic is Drupal and so so. Hi, Sally. My name. Uh, it can be really hard. It can be really easy to get your service worker stuck, um, loaded into the browser. Uh, there's a really good talk. I think you've got like service worker horror stories um, about a big travel website, I think, and, and they had lots of issues where. They just got to this point where it was impossible to unload the service worker. Oh, yeah. um, I've run into that. I've also uh, I started a project recently, and we spun it up from Create React app, which has service worker built in. Um, and it was hard because when you're in your normal development flow, it was kind of getting in the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you want to move a bit quicker. And so I'm like, oh, I've got to go and empty this now. Um, and that was frustrating. And I know there was an issue open with Create React app where a lot of a lot of other people were finding the same issue. Like yeah. they were finding quite a hindrance during development. So uh, yeah, it was cool, yeah, <laughs> but it what, definitely uh, wasn't just like plug it in and now I can go. And it was cool. Well, that, that's what we say. I mean, cache is one of the hot topic of IT. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because because you have to manage it. If you make a mistake, it always returns the same response, so you're stuck. <laughs> Uh, so now for Drupal and Progressive Web App. 
uh, there's a module that works fairly well for Drupal 7. Don't use the Drupal 8 version yet because it's rubbish. <laughs> um, and what it does is it creates a manifest.json file based on uh, you know the site configuration and some icons that you know get from well it's default icons that you need to update in your CM and that kind of things. And it gives you a default service worker file <laughs> that is going to cache all HTML pages. So it was the you know the the scenario where you fetch from the network, put in a cache, and send to the browser. Uh, it does that for HTML, HTML pages. And it serves all JavaScript and CSS files from the service worker cache while updating them in the background. So there's already one uh, request uh, late for the, for the assets, but uh, works fairly well. So that's what you get with the Drupal 7 version of the module. And hopefully, we get something similar into Drupal 8 core. Uh, there's not been many contribution on that. Some people complaining about, but I don't want people to you know, install service worker on my device because it's mine. And well, anyway. <laughs> uh, so that's you know, contrib Drupal 7. Uh, what I want to talk about uh, today is how uh, we can put that into Drupal 8, Drupal core. Uh, what is kind of safe to put in because of, like Sally said, there are issues with caching and you know, being stuck with the old version of the assets and that kind of things. Uh, so the, the first thing is that it needs to be simple enough to get into core uh, because otherwise it's going to take uh, months to get in or years and that's not helpful for anyone. So I don't think we should put uh, like the push support or background synchronization, or even put hooks to get that working somehow, uh, because it's going to get way too complicated. Uh, the second point I want to, you know, that I want you to keep in mind is that hopefully we don't have any configuration on that. So it's just you enable, you click a checkbox and it works, you remove the checkbox and it's going away, right? So like the big pipe module and that kind of things. Uh, so there are a few strategies that we can discuss. Uh, like for example, should we put everything into cache and only use it as a fallback when you're offline? Or should we try to put performance improvement uh, by, uh, by using the service worker cache to send the assets? And if we do that, uh, like how can we uh, advertise that to developers so they're not confused when something doesn't work, right? Uh, and it's those kind of topics that I want uh, to discuss with you uh, afterwards. Uh, a few resources, like the Google Chrome team has a library to make it easier to manage uh, the assets or like the pass and say everything in you know under admin is not cached and everything under style image style whatever is always cached that kind of thing so it makes it easier to manage so you don't have to write too much JavaScript and and code to make that working and uh, I mean Google is pushing progressive web app very heavily because when you audit something in the Dev Tools of Chrome. You have the lighthouse, uh, how do you say that, uh, like uh, performance rules that are checked against progressive web app. So if you don't have it, you have a lower score than if you have it. All right, so do you have any first feedback on uh, implementing a progressive web app in production? Or if you have questions or anything, please go on the mic. Hey, I'm Chris. Uh, so you and I have talked about this, uh, but I wanted to throw it out to the room to get more heads on it, potentially. The problem, I am a co-maintainer of the contrib thing, the D7 version that works well. Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> and a problem that we have 
or we've identified at least, is that as a pluggable server-side component, which is what Drupal contrib modules most of the time are, as a pluggable server component, the way a service worker functions is that you register it to tell the browser that it exists, and there is an unregister event to tell it to go away. Um, but if the, the PWA, if the service worker contrib module goes away, the code that potentially might be telling it to go away goes away. Um, <laughs> And we don't, no one knows how to solve that. I've kind of looked around for maybe um, there is a issue for maybe using a server header. Um, I thought, you know, we could put a post install or post uninstall message that says, you really, really, really need to put these three lines of JavaScript somewhere on your website now to unregister it and then leave them there for all eternity until you put another service worker in there. But if anyone has ideas about this or has tried a service worker, kind of got it stuck on a site, um, this is a pretty real problem and is one of the uh, rationales for putting at least yeah. part of this in core so that core can know that the thing isn't there anymore. And it doesn't go away. Serve it up. Anyway, it's a pretty tricky problem and uh, just wanted to throw it out there for people to <laughs> chew on. Some yeah, light questions to begin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That, like if you have, so you can't just uninstall it because the service worker is cached indefinitely and say I install the module and it's there three months and a bunch of people pick it up but uh, person A comes back daily and even if we had a transition time where we said okay we're uninstalling, we're leaving just some uninstall code on the website for six months and then we're you know sunsetting our service worker. Uh, if, if, if person Z doesn't come back until a year later, they still have that service worker and then the uninstall code has gone away. There's no way to, to do, like, I could really just talk, walk you through the fact that this is a problem for like an hour, but it, it, it so is the, tough. stuff yeah. on client side. That's really yeah, bad. it's on the client side. That's yeah, the yeah. problem. Because yeah. this is like a client caching problem. But anyway, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> starting with the light top. <laughs> Given that the, the initiative is about putting it in core, I, is that still an issue? Is that you'd uninstall the module and it wouldn't be there? Possibly, yes. Because well, it, mostly, but you need something in core yeah. to know that the thing, the other thing went away. Like so e even if, you're, if we have a separate uh, PWA module in core, and if the uninstall code is in this module, if you uninstall it, you don't have the code. So maybe, and we can't really say, let's put unregister codes on every Drupal website ever, enabled by default, because that's not really a great way to go about it. I mean, if, it, if that's a solution, maybe we'll do that, but I'm not sure. Well, I mean, couldn't you put an option to in, unregister in core? Because this could be a problem whether somebody's using the Drupal module or there was a domain, the same domain previously had a service worker yeah. and it's yeah. cached. So the, the unregistered problem The service worker itself has a way to update uh, itself. So there's a life cycle around updating a service worker as well. Uh -huh. So if, a, if it's a different one on the same scope, it's going to update itself and not... Uh, but if, there's a, if there was one oh. on, like, if I just bought a website, yeah. bought a domain, the previous domain had the service worker, oh, right. now I currently don't. I still have the unregistered problem regardless of whether I had a, ever had a Drupal site. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So you could potentially put like a clear service worker checkbox on a site. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah, actually I didn't. Like only in core. Um, yeah. But then it's a specific issue when you buy a website that used to have a website. So it's, yeah, yes, it would, yeah. This is a, a problem that sort of native apps have as well, is that once somebody's got it, then you, you can't take it away from them. So if, if, even if they, they, they run it again in six months' time and they're offline, then they, they're going to use it. And uh, are we trying to solve something that, that isn't really solvable? Yeah, well, if we have <laughs> solutions. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I really love this initiative. I, I, I think um, what, what 
you were discussing. I, I think you're too tall. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Discrimination. <laughs> um. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> no, okay. No, it's fine. Okay, thanks. Um, so I, I really like the, this initiative, and I think that there should be like this uh, no configuration thing in core. Um, but then, if you want to do something more advanced, uh, you should be able to just get rid of the core one and have your yeah. own. Um, and that comes back to, to what you mentioned about the, like uh, getting rid of it. And if you never had it, you know, if you never had this core module enabled, then you wouldn't need to have like this unregistered JavaScript yeah. that you need to have. Uh, a solution that I just, I don't know, maybe it just came up, but maybe it's not a solution. I haven't thought it through <laughs> properly. But um, what if core had um, like a, a checkbox sort of like in state? Like mm -hmm. you would keep the f so when you have a um, service worker um, module enabled, it's a, it tells core there has been one, and then when you uninstall it, core just says, "Oh, there was one," and always serves the the right, registered yeah. JavaScript. That could work. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, I. Well, I mean, I we, know, we but the so the thing is, it would it would be. Like in in um, not not really in, in oh yeah it would be very module specific but not a module specific like a module thing it's a type of module kind of thing it's so like, it's like user module we have authentication frameworks in yeah exactly in core, but user module is just one implementation of authentication right no I agree I, that I don't think it's module specific at all yeah. like if we would have like here say service worker framework in core, and then the PWA module. It no, doesn't service, sound simple. Uh, <laughs> it no, doesn't service sound worker simple. is a very, it's a very, um, it's, it's, it, fundamental. It, it's a fundamental, it's a, a specified W3C uh, concept. It's, it's something that well, we absolutely can build in the core. And then there will be implementation modules, like PWA will be yeah. a implementation of that concept. I don't think that's, yeah. that's, that's, like that's easy to, that's an easy argument to make, I think. I don't think that's a problem. Well, no, no you just need to make him a core committer and fix <laughs> <in. laughs> uh, no, no, but I agree that's great a good solution. That could be a good I solution for the, for the issue, yeah. yeah. I mean, we did have the disable overlay checkbox as well, but depend on the overlay module, but still. So, separate question. Um, great initiative, awesome stuff. Uh, have you, and I like the, the sort of scoping here that uh, uh, keeping background sync out of scope mm. initially. However, have you done any thinking about that? Uh, we've done, uh, I've done some experimentation with various technologies, mm. but have you done any thinking about how that potentially could work? Uh, like writing things offline and... Uh, I mean, it's... Uh, I mean, there, there are ways to do it with index DB, that kind of thing, but mm. the problem is that Core doesn't have like one way of doing things, so yeah. there's not one way of saving requests and sending them back again. So maybe with the API first initiative, we can make that better, but uh, that's why for now it's going to be in Contrib yeah. because we need to figure that out. Yeah. And like the Google, Anal ah, Google Analytics modules, you know, could save uh, visiting uh, visitor data while offline and synchronize back and that kind of stuff, but that's module specific. So the way to make that extensible and easy to use for developer, is that shouldn't be in core for a while at least. But I don't have a solution on how to make that easy either. It'd be interesting to have some sort of uh, framework, I suppose, for forms to like submit somewhere that is uh, not yeah, that's to post to the back end. It's like a 10-year-old issue, like saving form data. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 that it would could, but that's... Half of Drupal to the front end. So do you only have like hard questions? Or? <laughs> 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 no, but that's good to, to at least, uh, you know, uh, talk about it now. Yeah. This may actually increase the scope of this. I, I, I have not... <laughs> Sorry, David. Uh, uh, name's David. Uh, is, there a, is it common practice or is it even possible to prefetch the entirety of a site and stuff it in a service worker? Uh, That's possible. So in, in, in service worker cache. So yeah. on first load, load 
Everything. Yeah. Well, more, more or less everything. Yeah, it's possible. Like the PWA module does that. You can uh, predefine a list of URL you want in cache during the installation. And the module is going to fetch those pages, get all the assets as well, because the CSS name are going to change on all of those pages. Uh, but it's possible, yeah. But it, then you run into the issue of, is it a logged in user? Is it not a logged right, in user? Yeah. OK, yeah. That, that was my second question then. So <laughs> that, that, it, it, it's saving. It's saving a single copy. It's not saving a logged in version of a page. Well, if, if the headers are different and okay, sure. if uh -huh. stuff are different between the requests, it, you can save both and serve the right one at the right time. Okay. Because the, the cache work with the, the key is a request and the value is a response. So if the request is different, the response is different. And is it also domain specific or limited to the particular domain of the origin page? Will it grab? Uh, oh, it's actually. only your domain because I mean that's re oh, well you can so say you, you I, say will if an iframe will it grab the ask the the contents of an iframe as well it will but you can't look into the content you can put it in a cache mm -hmm. but you can't look into the request to modify the the content of right. the request okay. but you can still put whatever returns in the cache and serve it again okay even cool. if it's not your domain so like Google font Google Analytics right. scripts okay, yeah. that's in the cache. Yeah. Matt, uh, I don't have any questions about service workers, but uh, recently, uh, maybe in Canary, uh, Chrome added the connection info uh, API to the Navigator object. Mm -hmm. Do you think that would be worth it for us to look into adding sort of Drupal API so that people could look at that information, sort of cross-browser if available, and adjust the stuff they're serving in the browser based on connection info, especially for offline. So, like if a very low speed connection. So, what do you mean? I didn't, I don't think I got it. So, uh, providing like a easy access to the network connection info that's available. Oh, network connection. Uh, yeah. I mean, are you, like a poly field for it? Yeah, if it's available. Um, I know in it's core, specific canary go. right now in core, yeah. Usually we put stuff in code we use, so if yeah. you don't, well, except jQuery UI for a while, but. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think it's course place to make polyfill for that kind of stuff. Okay. But in contrib, yeah. Sure. Definitely. Okay. Uh, Gabe, I'll try and actually talk about something we wanted to discuss here, which was the, um, whether to always serve from the network or always from cache. Yeah. And Maybe we can split the difference there and, and have the service worker implement some kind of timeout policy. So if, if the network cache doesn't respond in, in one second or two seconds, then we'll go ahead Serve and call back yeah. the cache. That could work, yeah. But then, I mean, we need to put that up in an issue and get people talking about it. But yeah, that's one of the possible solutions, yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure there are probably, like, uh, I know there's research out there that, that shows, like, drop-off times and kind of an expected page download time that we might be able to reference. I mean, yes, uh, but then those those measurements, it's usually like uh, region specific, so it depends. For core, I don't know how we would go about setting a limit or that kind of thing, but that could work, yeah. yeah sorry, I, I was a bit late, so I just have to assume. So. Um, the, the thing was that, that you have something running on client side and you don't know how to stop it and the module is gone. Yeah. So, so and what if you, this client side thing, it, it just pings the some uh, thing from the server, maybe a JS file that is somewhere, and this thing would look different if the module is installed and it was, I mean, it's not installed. Mm -hmm. And then it knows, oh, it's no longer there. Okay, goodbye. Like, something like this. Yeah, that's uh, similar to the idea of the then checkbox. You don't have to do anything in core. Because Wait. if it just looks, OK, there's a core JS file somewhere. Yeah. And OK, it's there. But then there's the module JS file. And oh, it's not there. And problem solved or something. <laughs> uh, well, well, no, because even if it's not there on the server, it's still in the browser cache. Yeah, but then the browser just pings the server and says, oh, it's oh. not there. So oh. I have to uninstall myself. Goodbye. 
I don't know if they can uninstall themselves. Okay, maybe that's. Maybe, I mean, if if maybe if it, it should, it should be able to do that. Yeah, yeah. Negative phone call. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And yeah. then uh, it has the capability to, to uninstall itself. If it can uninstall itself, that would be a good way. But I don't know if it can. Uh, Gabe, again, are you dead set on no configuration? Uh, because I wanted to get in not uh, next year, so okay. sort of. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, it depends. It depends on what you have in mind. Like, is it for the uh, to configure the caching strategy for types of requests? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, or, yeah. Or, or the timeout values. Right. Yeah. So, to me, that would be contrib, okay. because this is supposed to be like uh, you're not very technical. You install the module or check the checkbox, and then it it works well enough. Not to provide the website offline and not necessarily make it fast. Okay. It's uh, like website tuning or something. Did, did you put any thought into uh, trying to integrate with cache tags, cache contacts at all? Uh, well, so because the request, uh, you know, the, the cache, the, the key of the cache, service worker cache, is the whole request, so content and headers, it already takes care of it, basically. Oh, what do you mean, like using the headers for what kind of things? Uh, I mean, I imagine it would be possible to keep like a list of invalidation tags and have the service worker only basically send a request to say what has, what has been invalidated since the last time I checked, and if so, invalidate that in my own cache. Um, oh, wow, well, yeah. Uh, but then you need to maintain a list of that stuff on the yeah, server true. side. So, I mean, it could be done. Uh, Vim is not here, but he might have ideas on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah bad caching, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, for, for the first step, that's a bit too much, I think, but possibly it could be done. Okay. Like the CDN um, integration with uh, Drupal cache headers, yeah. Yes. Similar. <coughs> could be. Hi, Alexander. Um, I was thinking in the same direction as Gabe as well. Like, if we do some configuration for the strategies, if you provide same defaults there that mm -hmm. work for most people, then the non-technical people can still just enable it and go. But um, the site builder that does know that it might work a little bit different for their site still yep. has the option to change it. So, I mean, I'm I'm happy to to have that in core if uh, you know we can get in get it. Get it in. I mean, it's uh, yeah. okay. Yeah. It, it's it's only the issue of timing because it takes a long time to do stuff in core. Mm -hmm. So, just to make sure that we have that as fast as possible for people to use, and then make it better over time. Yeah. Okay. But on the other side, you don't need to discuss which strategy you want to go with anymore. You don't, you only need to figure out which ones you want to implement. So you right. can save yeah, some yeah, yeah. time. You can yes. save some time in that discussion. <laughs> Yeah, but then you see, like, uh, even setting the default takes yeah, no, no, no. insane amount of time. Like, the f image files, like, defaulting to year and months, mm. I don't think it's even committed yet. Mm. Like, the default value for saving the folder in which the image is saved when you upload it. So, even yeah, okay, setting yeah. default uh, is hard to, to do, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Right. I don't know when we should, when we're supposed to stop. Still. <laughs> oh yeah, twenty. That's right. Yeah. Are there other things that you wanted to kind of present to us and, and maybe get our thoughts or feedbacks on that you have some some doubts about or? Uh, well, I mean, those are the main points because since I want to keep it simple. Uh, the main problem is the uninstalling 
uh, and after the strategy, it's not that hard to change as long as we agree on it. So okay. nothing yet. Hi. Um, so couldn't this go in as an experimental module and then the stuff gets worked out as it makes its way through that process? Um, it has to, because right. I think now the process is to first experimental and then I don't think we will commit anything stable directly. You can, you can put up seven stable. Really? Did oh wow! But they pushed for that quite hard because they didn't. They wanted people to be yeah. convinced that the data model wasn't going to change the brain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they had to push very hard because it was yeah. no Richard going yeah, to be yeah. experimental. <laughs> so no, but yeah, it's going to be experimental first. I right. Think. So if you start in that process and you have sensible defaults, and then as it's kind of getting worked out in that way, you have less of the pressure of yeah. people piling on. and Yeah, and we it, can add the strategies, right. configuration, yeah. So you don't have to start out of the gate of having all of this figured out. You can kind of just roll oh, yeah, it in. Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. That, I agree, that's the way to go, yeah. Um, so, yeah, the media entity, I think, was because, sto because there was storage, they didn't want to have it as not stable going in. All right. Is yeah. there any um, sort of, I, I don't know if there is, I don't know enough about it, but is there any, like, worry that if it doesn't go in as stable, we're storing stuff, or ex storing experimental stuff on the client's browser? Mm -hmm. So potentially, if we get it wrong, and we don't know what state it's in, can we can we for sure clear it out, or is there any? Yeah, that's the uninstall issue. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the, the idea that we have to support about like having a, a card in core, yes, not yes. as part of the module, yeah. that doesn't do anything but pretend to have this yeah. framework. That that would be the stable part, where the the module that yeah. implements the service worker in the end and the the caching strategy that would be the yeah. experimental part. Yeah. Yeah. We need to have a piece of it in core directly without a module enabled and a piece in the module uh, to do the rest of it, yeah. Could you maybe start with a, a config module that said, I'll, I'll cache the pages that the user's been to? And this? You go to them. We have that. You have that? That does, it happens today. Okay, <laughs> that's the PWA module. It's a branch. Yeah, and it has a list of files. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, and then could you have some some way of uh, maybe saying we'll take the we'll kind of key bits of that into a into a core module that doesn't have any UI that would have a different contrib module if you want to have. Well, it's uh, it's messy code, so I don't think it will pass anything, any gate in core. <laughs> it's really bad, and it's like the the user issue as well. So. If you save stuff as a logged in user and as anonymous, it's very different. So, um, and with the the uninstall thing, um, if if Core was to ship a um, blank service worker, uh, would that <coughs> solve the problem if you uninstall a module? Oh, m yeah, maybe. Yes, yeah, so I have a default service, service worker always there. It's always there. That's just empty any cache that it finds, yeah. Possibly, that's one solution as well, yeah. Uh, he, he just raised a, a point that I hadn't really thought of. Do we need to be concerned about the service worker caching things that are only available as when you're authenticated? And do we care if something Probably. logs out? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, um, I need to check with uh, some people to see if when you're logged in, there's a header that's different all the time or not. Yeah. Because if that's the case, we won't run into problems. But then you can query the cache either way. So. Cache is path specific. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a headers as well. As far as I know. Right. Cash on, so. Like you can do a cash 
I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> this is another hard question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it could add, uh, add yes, the for different users, yeah. Okay. I mean, we need to figure that out, so. I mean, we can add a new restriction saying only anonymous users. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I mean one, one thing to do would, would be to um, perhaps have it like an expire cookie that you're checking or uh, when you log out, they. Well, you don't have access to the cookies inside the service worker. You don't? No, you don't. So, well, you have access to request headers, but it's not really the same as a... Well, if you start with request headers, then you certainly have cookies. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I, I think the current stance is that if you want something different than what's now provided by the core service worker, you have to make something for yourself in Contrib. Yeah. Um, but we already have this JavaScript framework for things like Ajax and um, field attach things. Mm -hmm. um, can there be, are there any plans or thoughts to extend that to a service worker? So a contract module could hook into the existing service worker instead of replace it? No, that's the no configuration part. Because I, I know that could be possible, but it's going to be, and even it's, service worker is already hard to work with. If at the same time you alter stuff in the middle, it's going to be a nightmare. So, I did actually put a big kind of a meta issue in the PWA contrib module when I found this thing and I said, hey, what do you think about splitting this up into its component parts mm. and there would be a service worker module, the, um, like a manifest module, mm -hmm. and then the PWA is a set of configuration which just depends on these other APIs. And he was like, yeah, go ahead, write them. And <laughs> You know, it just, it, and he didn't. You know, that's an API that someone has to manage then. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, and of course, um, it's going to be a lot of work, and you've got to make a bunch of architectural decisions that people are going to disagree with fundamentally because of the flexibility of the spec itself. And backporting and. Yeah, yeah, and backporting everything. And then on top of that, if you want it user friendly, you have to have a module that is essentially, you know, some config wrapped in an object and that is your, your user-friendly module is just config. Yeah. Um, so I said, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we did it this way? He was like, it would certainly be cool. Uh, if you did get it. On. <laughs> yeah. so, that, so definitely not now. Yeah, so we just stayed yeah. with uh, the, yeah. the version that it is yeah. now is errors on the side of simplicity, both for the, the end user and the maintainer at, the, at, yeah. at this moment. And it is the most foolproof solution, although there's other things that, that come with that. There's difficulties that come with it. But the service worker, I was trying to explain this to someone earlier this week. You kind of have to think of it sometimes as delivering a signed binary to the, oh, the yeah. user because, because everything about a web page is supposed to be decoupled and fallback friendly, mm -hmm. JS, CSS fonts in particular all these extraneous assets that come with HTML to make a web page. But the service worker puts you back in a position where if you don't have all of those things, then your thing which is claiming it's going to work properly doesn't work without all of them. And then what if you clear cache once in Drupal and you're refer referencing, you've got some new HTML but you stick with the old assets that you had, which selectors have changed and so forth. Um, then it's very easy for CSS and HTML in particular to get out of sync in a service worker that isn't written the way the PWA is because it basically says, I'm just checking the state of everything now and then putting it all in the cache all at once. Um, and if you put flexibility in there by making a flexible API, then people will just start shooting themselves in the foot very quickly. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. You should have the power, right? But uh, it's definitely not for a drop-in, like, turn it on and make it work type module. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and also maybe to lighten the mood, uh, the manifest part of this whole progressive web app, we can put that in core, like, right now. We don't need to have any service worker attached to it because it's useful by itself. And that, you know, replace, like, the 20 meta tags for the Apple icons and that kind of stuff. So we could already have that and you know, have the service worker later. 
but there's an issue open and it needs uh, contributing, basically. Right. Anything else? We solved it, right? <laughs> I don't know about that. I haven't seen any ad advertising it at least. There's a like a pwa.rocks website that lists a few uh, like progressive web apps that are in production. Some of them actual website and not just demo. Maybe they use a framework, I don't know. CMS or something. I mean, I did in, in a session say, if you have experience with other CMS and PWA, you should come, so. This Nobody is more does. of a, a logistics question. In, if, if we want to advance this in the issue queue, is the lack of Safari support a non-starter for getting this off the ground? Safari what? Safari support, yeah. <laughs> Safari support. No, no, no. <laughs> Especially since uh, lots of core folks use iPhones, and we'll probably find little utility in this. Well, it's a good way to, you know, experience Android, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, because, I mean, it's a progressive web app, so sure. if there's no support, it doesn't break stuff. So I wouldn't think it's a... Uh, because there's no way to polyfill that. Break less stuff if you don't have support. Actually, yeah. <laughs> but, but it would work better it, in Safari. It's hard to sell the value to people, right, if it's not working on their particular device. I mean, it's on the, the WebKit roadmap. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I mean, Safari is starting to implement it, so it's going to be there at some point, mm -hmm. just not now. Mm -hmm. Just like the picture stuff. I mean, we had a polyfill for a while, and mm -hmm. we're about to remove it, I think, maybe. Um, so is the, the one of the main reasons not to do this in Trip or 8 is the unregister problem? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, so why not pair a... But the, the yeah. blank uh, service worker thing is yeah. probably a good way to go about it. Yeah. Because, it, I mean, it, we even if there's no configuration, there's the discussion of, okay, what's the default behavior? And yeah, so that's, uh, that's why, I mean, the two strategies, that's pretty much what we can choose from. The rest is maybe too complicated, I guess. But if... if, if if a fair amount of sites haven't used it in, with Drupal, then is, is it hard to actually choose between those without real world experience? Because basically we'd be choosing without having sort of. Oh yeah, because of use cases and yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. So that's why we should take the more, uh, I mean to me the put in cache and only fallback is probably the best way to go because what we want is for the website to work offline. Yeah. So that the minimum we need to do to make it work offline. And then if you want to improve it, then you write the code. <laughs> but, but isn't that assuming that most people want this for offline rather than performance reasons? It is, yes. I, I mean, I guess that's probably, I mean, and that's looking at other web apps that are using it. They're sort of emphasizing the uh, I, I don't think they would emphasize the fact that it's offline. But um, like if you have a progressive web app, yeah. you can, well, on Android and Chrome, when you install this uh, progressive web app, it generates uh, APK5, mm -hmm. so it's a proper app yeah. in your phone. Yeah. And it only needs a service worker that maybe doesn't even put things, things in cache. Okay. So that's enough just to get like, uh, the app feature of yeah. the integration. Ah. Okay. which is, you know, probably more useful for people than making things faster. Yeah. And you can just remove an image and, you know, make it fast anyway. Okay, thanks. Is, is there like a, a bare minimum that we might be able to tweak in core or provide in core and then allow most of this to, to live and contrib? So maybe going okay. to the example that they had with the the default or the null yeah. service worker, could we make a simple issue that says we should just be provide, providing this without really talking about providing service worker in as in core to start, and then it would be easy to have a contrib uh, version. 
Does that make sense? Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was. Uh, yeah, uh, I agree with the with the comment, with the process. The first, we do something verbose, no configuration, and we talk about making it better, like with the experimental module um, process, mm. and that would be because I mean the default are going to be like two, three hundred comments. So uh, I I mean not even a default that that does anything, something that is maybe in the system module or defined by services.yaml or, or something like that, that is, it's not a module, it's simply yeah. there to clear out anything that was existing beforehand and anything that was put there and then uninstalled. And uh, that, so the blank service worker the, thing. The blank. Yeah, but it yeah. doesn't have to be a default with any. any right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we could do that, yes. So I guess uh, maybe does anyone has an idea of why we should not do this? Maybe. <laughs> if you put a blank one in there, it's installable. Uh, like every group process will be installed. Actually, yeah. So that would be good anyway. I think we do. I mean, every website has images now, so it's kind of as important. No, I, I don't know. I'm assuming. Yeah, but well, the, I'm blank, yeah, the blank one doesn't, yeah. doesn't do anything. Else. Yeah. I mean, it's just blank. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it does do something. It triggers. A, yeah, it triggers. It, the, it, it triggers a thing. heuristic within yeah. the browser to create. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so like, I mean, if if it's just a blank one, then there's like the the, the benefit of having this, like, is is kind of gone. So like the the, the reason why you would have this. Actually, yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So, so the the, fa the reason why you have this module is like you can say I want this. Yeah. And then you opt in into. So if you have yeah. a blank one, you you are forced to get it. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so that's the only time you simplified something. So thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so we could remove a lot of the scope and say ship a blank one. Yeah. We could do that. Yeah, or you know, a next no, step the in. Blank one would, would be also when the module point. is not enabled. That's the point. Like ah. it would always be there. It's oh yeah, yeah, yes, yes. That's what uh, I agree with. That no, put it in core. Yes, yeah. yeah. Put it in core. The blank one to handle the uninstall. It's a post uninstall service. Yeah, yeah. That but would. Uh, still the installability of, of yes. The site well, I mean, we need to check. So maybe if there's no like fetch. Uh, Event handler, maybe it doesn't trigger, I don't know. We need to test that. <laughs> Cheating a bit. <laughs> no, service worker and HTTPS. Yeah. Yeah, for the manifest, you need the image size. Uh, like minimum image size for it to display properly and that kind of stuff. If, if that image size is not in the manifest file, would it still replace an old service worker? Because in that case, then we... Yeah, yeah it would still work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, all that stuff is independent. I mean, there's, yeah. there's like four moving parts here. But ah, so, yeah, so yeah. that solves that. Then it's yeah. not immediately installable. Yeah. No, we solved it actually, yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> 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 we should do that more often. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah. it's simple enough, yeah. I don't know what you're doing. Uh, I mean, we have 30 seconds to, for final question, and we can do it for like <laughs> before trivia. <laughs> right, no, so let's end on a good note, and uh, thank you very much for coming.